Hello and welcome to lecture 2.3 on finding trigonometric function values using a calculator. I'm Professor Michael Bailey at Dallas College. Today we're going to look at calculator approximations of trig functions, calculator approximations of angle measures, and we're going to look at one specific application problem. <clears throat> As we talked about before, remember when evaluating trig functions of angles given in degrees, Remember that the calculator must be set into the group degree mode. A good habit is to always start working by entering the sine of 90. And if you get the answer that's displayed on your calculator as 1, then you know your calculator is set for degree measure. Remember that most calculator values of trig functions are approximations, not actual numbers. This is when you get that long decimal point that continues on. Um, because it continues on it, and we round it, then it's an approximation. So let's look at a couple simple examples. The first one is to find the sine of 49 degrees and 12 minutes. So using your calculator, you're going to hit the sine button. Uh, let me clear my calculator first. You're going to hit the sine button, which is a couple buttons above. Um, the 7 key. You're going to type in 49 and then um, right above the sign button on your calculator is an apps button and you'll see right above that in blue writing is angle. So you're going to hit second apps and you'll see number one is the degree and then I can write type in 12 second apps and then number two is minutes and I can hit enter and then I hit enter again and I got an error because my calculator was in radian mode and so my your calculator may help you realize that you're not set up and so I just made the mistake um, that we talk about not making so again what you're going to do is make sure that your calculator is in degree mode and if you look at the mode button which is three or four buttons above the seven key, you can go down and make sure that you're in degree mode. Okay. Once you've done that, um, then you can enter the value and you get this approximation point um, 7569950557, which they've rounded to uh, 506 at the end. Okay. Now you'll notice for, for the question B, the secant of 97.977 degrees, um, we don't have a secant button. So what we have to do is first find the cosine of 97.977 and then take the reciprocal. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that now. Do cosine 97.977. Hit the second button, hit apps, hit number one for degree, close your parenthesis, and hit enter. Now, if you look, um, if you look um, to the left of the seven button, you'll see log, and above that, you'll see x squared, and then above that key, you'll see x to the negative one, and that x to the negative one will um, give you the inverse. So first you have to hit um, the second button, and if you look down to the period under your numbers, right to the right of that, you'll see a negative sign, and above that is the answer. So if you want to use the last answer, hit second, and then that negative sign, and then you hit um, x to the negative 1, and that will convert the cosine into... Um, a secant. Okay, so again, what you're doing here is you're taking the cosine of that. Once you do that, you hit second and that negative um, button at the very bottom, which gives you the answer, the previous answer, and then we want to take the reciprocal of this answer. So again, we hit second, negative, and then we hit the x to the negative one key, which is a reciprocal key. Okay, so. Um, the second one here is much more, a little bit more complicated, so you want to really pay attention to that and how to find 
when you have um, when you're looking for secant, cosecant, or cotangent, obviously first find the reciprocal function tangent, um, sine, and, and cosine, and then take the reciprocal with the x to the negative one button. Okay. Approximate the value of these expressions: one over cotang cotangent, fifty-one point four two eight three. So we know that tangent of theta equals the cotan 1 over the cotangent of theta. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to take the, since we have the same angle, we're going to um, plug in the tangent of this angle to find the answer. Okay, And um, this is simply just plugging it in as we've already looked at. Tangent um, 51.4283, and then um, second apse, which gives you the angle, and you can use number one for degrees. Okay, sine of negative 246, we're just going to plug this in directly the way we would um, if it was 246 positive. So we're just going to enter this in as sine negative 246, again, second apse, which gives us the different angular measures, angle, minutes, and seconds. And we get, um, I got here 91345. So let's look at this in our calculator and figure out, um, we've got two different answers here. We've got a positive in the screen print and a negative. So let's look at our own calculators and figure out which of these is the typo. You should be able to plug it into your calculator and figure out which one is correct. But also if we look at this, um, the angle is negative 246. If we start at the x-axis and go clockwise 246, we end up in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2, y is positive, so sine will be positive. So this answer on the left, written in, is incorrect, whereas the picture of the calculator screen is correct. This should be a positive 0.9135454, etc. <clears throat> if you notice above your sine, cosine, and tangent button, you'll have sine to the negative 1, cosine to the negative 1, and tangent to the negative 1. So these are um, doing um, what's called inverse sine or inverse cosine or arc sine, arc cosine, arc tan. And that is when you have the angle, when an angle is given, excuse me, when a trig function is given to you, if you use that button, then you can find the angle of theta which satisfies this trig value okay so here we're going to have um, we're going to type in sine um, negative one so that's um, the blue second button in the sine button then we type in um, the trig function value given to us in the problem and hit enter and um, we get seven five point three nine 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 etc <clears throat> B is really probably one of the most challenging. So we know that the secant of theta equals this value. Okay. All right. So um, the cosine of the same angle gives us 1 over this value, 1 over secant theta. Well, we know secant theta equals this. So we can use that to use the arc cosine or the cosine to the negative 1 button. Okay, so here what we're going to do is do um, cosine negative 1, 1 over this value because we can see the relationship there, um, such that we get 18.5, etc. Look at this example really closely, okay? Um, the, the inverse cosine equals 1 over secant, excuse me, cosine of theta equals 1 over secant. So if we're trying to find the angle, we're going to use inverse cosine 1 over the secant value. All right, so this one's a little bit confusing, and I always have to slow down when I'm doing these um, arc secant or inverse secant, inverse trig functions with the reciprocal secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Okay, and here you can see the calculator screen um, that you would be typing in. So again, a little reminder of the more um, difficult ones. To determine the secant of an angle, so when we're just taking the secant, cosecant, or cotangent of an angle, 
remember we find we find this by taking the reciprocal of the cosine or the reciprocal function of that angle okay and this is the exact problem we just did a few slides back so you're looking at the first one okay first you take the cosine of that angle and then you take the reciprocal of the answer you got okay Secondarily, this is the one we just did, to determine an angle with a given secant value, we find the inverse cosine of the reciprocal, the inverse cosine or the inverse function of the reciprocal, okay? And here we saw, <clears throat> it's the second one here, so we take the inverse, since cosine is the reciprocal of secant, we take the inverse cosine of the reciprocal value of the secant okay so the inverse cosine of 1 over 1.054 okay this is a really important page you might want to copy it or print it etc because these i think are the more challenging ones to do with our calculator which is those three reciprocal trig functions of secant cosecant and cotangent when we're trying to figure them out with the calculator okay let's look at a simple problem here when an automobile travels uphill or downhill on a highway, it experiences a force due to gravity. This force F in pounds is the grade resistance and is modeled by the equation F equals W sine theta, where theta is the grade. And you can see that here um, in the diagram. It's the grade if you're going up. It's, it's kind of the the grade with a perpendicular line, a horizontal line, um, with the slope going down, okay? We can see here, this follows our, um, pretty much our normal uh, nomenclature, and that is when we go in a counterclockwise direction, um, the angle is um, positive. When we go in a clockwise direction, the angle is negative. When we um, apply that, then we see that if the automobile is moving uphill, um, we're going to use a positive theta. If the um, automobile is moving downhill, we're going to use a negative theta. And what this does, it makes kind of sense. If you ever, you know, bike up a hill versus going down the hill, the force, um, the resistance is acting against you as a positive force. If a resistance acting against you is negative, it's actually um, operating for you. So let's look at one. So here we have a um, calculate the um, grade resistance F to the nearest 10 pounds for a 2,500 pound car traveling an uphill grade, um, which equals 2.5 degrees. Since it's uphill, the, the angle should be positive, which it is. And then we just um, apply our formula. F equals the weight times the sine of the grade. And so we get 2,500 times the sine of 2.5 degrees, uh, which is approximately 110 pounds, rounding to the nearest 10 pounds. In the second one, we're going downhill. So again, the angle is going to be negative. Here we have a 10 pound, I'm sorry, we have a 5,000 pound truck that's going downhill on a 6.1 degree grade. And again, we just plug in those values, 5,000 times the sine of negative 6.1, and we get negative 530 pounds. And so this, again, it's not a resistance. It's a negative resistance, which is actually helping you go faster um, than you would just by your own means. Okay. And again, the force is negative because the truck is moving downhill. <clears throat> Let's look at this problem from a different perspective. Calculate the grade resistance for an angle whose um, zero degrees equals zero degrees and an angle which equals 90 degrees. So here we have a perfect horizontal and here we have a perfect vertical. Okay. <clears throat> so if we first um, plug in zero degrees, the sine of zero is zero. And so notice that no matter what the weight of the vehicle is, um, we get zero degree of grade resistance. Well, on a flat surface, you're not going to get any um, negative resistance or any positive resistance, right? You know, this is when you're biking on a flat surface, it's probably one of the, it's not the easiest, obviously downhill is more easy, um, but you're, you're just using the weight of your bike, etc. 
when we're looking at 90 degrees, notice that when we plug in W sine 90, we get W times 1 since the sine of 90 is 1. And so the whole impact of our, um, of our of the grade is basically your weight, which of course this makes sense, right? That your weight is really um, a measure of force that's really operating down on your body at a perpendicular to the planet or the surface which you're on, which is what a 90 degree angle is. Um, so if the theta is zero, then there's level ground and gravity does not cause the vehicle to roll. And if uh, theta equals 90, then the road is vertical and the full weight of the vehicle would be pulled downward by gravity. So force um, grade resistance equals your